welcome back to the news today. This is One on One. Only two months ago, it seemed that the Israeli Labour Party was well on its way to becoming a third or fourth ranked opposition party. But after opposition leader Isaac Herzog signed a unity deal with Tsipi Livni's party, the historic Labour became the Zionist Union. And the most recent poll just last night showed the party with a small lead on the ruling Likud. And joining me tonight is member of Israeli parliament, Chilik Bar, number seven on the Zionist Union's list for parliament. Mr. Barr, thanks very much for being with me. Just to correct you, we didn't become the Zionist uh, new list. We are still the Labour Party. This is two different parties that united together in order to have better chance to apply to the, the Israeli people. But the Labour Party, the historic Labour Party, is still and will still always be uh, the Labour Party. So let's begin, actually, with this. I wanted to, to go to today's state controller report on the Netanyahu household. But before we get to that, then, the new uh, union of uh, this Zionist Union, Showing different polls is showing different numbers all the time, but the most recent, as I just mentioned, has the Zionist Union ahead of the ruling Likud. Polls are one thing, numbers are one thing, but as we know in Israel, forming a coalition is a whole other uh, beast, so to speak. How will the Zionist Union form a coalition to make it into the government? I think that beside maybe Naftali's Bennett uh, uh, party and Likud, of course, all the other parties in Israel are a potential partner to uh, a, a government under Isaac Herzog. I think that even if you hear from uh, time to time, uh, we will not fit with this or will not fit with that, I think that most of the parties understand that Bibi Netanyahu and the Likud had failed, failed with the major ch challenges that Israel have, and will be more than willing to cooperate uh, in a new government under Herzog. They know Herzog. They know that he is a hard worker. They know that he is a straight and honest and not a corrupted man. And I think that even on personal level, uh, most of them prefer Herzog. But you know, there is, until the election day, and after the election day, right now, all the parties are focusing in achieving the most uh, votes and the most seat in the Knesset. And uh, at the 18 of March, we will try to, uh, as I believe, compose the next government, to form the next government uh, under Isaac Herzog. You use the words uh, not corrupt, which is, of course, a key thing uh, in these current elections with all of the different scandals making it into the headlines. There has been, though, criticism of Isaac Herzog that he's sort of not perceived as really being ready to lead on the defense and security fronts that have become such a staple of the Israeli not only election but reality. What do you say to that? That that's the biggest lie. Uh, I think that Isaac Herzog have a huge experience. He was a uh, five-time minister. He was the chief of the cabinet of a prime minister. He was involved in the negotiation with Arab states, with the Palestinians. He have a lot of experience. Something that not all of the other candidates and heads of parties uh, have. He's not a corrupted guy. He have an experience that the Israelis uh, need. And beside that, you know, the right wing is trying to uh, draw a picture like. He have uh, uh, um, uh, advantages in security, but even in security, the right wing has failed. We saw that thousands of missiles uh, um, uh, going down on our um, um, uh, citizens, not only in the south of Israel, but uh, the entire Israel. We saw the tunnels that we didn't know about. We saw people get killed in the middle of uh, Jerusalem and Tel Aviv. So security and Likud is not the same thing uh, uh, anymore. And actually, I think that if you will check most of the uh, senior security people after when they retire, where they are joining, they are joining the central left uh, uh, parties. A because they think that we know about security. You know, we founded like the states of Israel. Actually. Not only, not mm -hmm. only. See historically, right? Uh, uh, they know that we are established the state of Israel, established the the IDF and its uh, uh, Torah. You know of this IDF, and definitely we don't know less from the Likud. But they also know that security in Israel is not only smart missiles, but it's also smart diplomacy and this is something that the Likud don't have. Exactly the point I want to come to. It's a big subject but so talking security and the failures of the right, this is a criticism being heard more and more that while as you say the Likud and the right wing has been associated with a sort of strength and ability to provide defense, the situation is actually not so good in Israel. So how would the Zionist Union approach this current security situation? You have a fear of another war with Hezbollah in the north, you have Hamas uh, always building up more missiles as far as we know. What uh, what would the Zionist Union do at this point to boost Israel's security? You know, uh, the late Prime Minister uh, Yitzhak Rabin said once a, a very smart sentence. He said, we will fight terror, that there is no efforts for peace, and we will try to bring peace like there is no struggle against uh, terror. And I think that this is what the Labour Party will do. In one hand, we will fight in every way uh, the terror organization, the barbaric terror organization, the Hamas, ISIS, Daesh, and all the other barbaric terror organization. We know how to do it, not less from the Likud, but even better from the Likud. But on the other hand, we will stop. On the other hand, we will stop the isolation that Israel is uh, facing in Europe. Uh, we will recover the uh, relationship with the United States as a whole and with the United States uh, president. Something that Isaac Herzog has said absolutely, frequently. In the last absolutely, absolutely. And we will prepare a peace plan. 
even if we will fail, you know, one of the problems of Israel is that we didn't, we, we are not trying anymore to solve the conflict. The right wing is suggesting conflict management, and a strong and brave leadership is not managing the conflict, it's trying to uh, solve the conflict. And this is what Israel under Herzog will do. Again, we can succeed, we can not succeed. It's also depend on the uh, other side, in the partner that we have or not have. And beside that, we will not, yeah. So let's please. pause on this for a moment, because it's easy to say we will try, maybe we won't succeed, and the partner that we I may that we or may not have. I think we will succeed, by the way. We hear a lot yeah. of times uh, from the current government and traditionally throughout talks that Abbas is not really a partner for peace and that it's good that he, he needs to be in, with Hamas, there needs to be a unified government, then that we can't uh, speak with this government because they are including Hamas. A lot of mixed messages. So who is a partner for peace? For I Israel? think that uh, Abbas is a partner for peace, not like Hamas. He chose for the last eight years or nine years that he's uh, the president of the Palestinian Authority. He chose not to fight with us via terror and intifada. He chose to fight with us diplomatically. And by the way, diplomatically, he's winning Israel. This is another uh, very low point of the uh, Likud. But together with Abu Mazen, there is a whole line of Arab countries like Jordan, like Egypt, that we reached peace with uh, before, and other pragmatic Arab uh, states that we can also put in the equation. And you know, the Likud see the entire Palestinian and the Arab world as one unit that is against us. All of them want to eliminate us. And we don't see it because it's not true. We are dividing the Arab world and the Palestinian to two main parts. Those who want to live here next to us and those who want to live here instead of us. Those who want to live here instead of us, we, was, uh, we will fight together with our brave soldiers and the most moral army in the world, the IDF. But with those who want to live here and they should prove it. Next to us, we have to talk, and right now, the right-wing government is not doing it, and we are paying the price around the world. One of the most contentious issues, of course, in all of Israel's history is, of course, Jerusalem. It's a big sticking point in all of uh, the negotiations. How, where does the Zionist Union, Tzipi Livni, of course, I will remind our viewers, is as the chief negotiator uh, for some time, has been very involved in the talks with Mahmoud Abbas. Where would the Zionist Union stand on Jerusalem in, in peace talks in the future? It depends what Jerusalem you are referring. If you are referring a uh, few dozens of uh, villages and neighborhoods uh, that surrounding is Jerusalem that are already occupied by Palestinians, I don't want to be there, I don't want to be part of my country, I don't want to pay them uh, um, anything, I don't want them to be my citizens, I will be happy. How in practice can you do that for them not to be Israel citizens? For those villages who we can create contiguity with the future Palestinian state, again, not the East Jerusalem, the holy uh, uh, part of Jerusalem, but the surrounding neighborhoods. Jerusalem? We will, in East Jerusalem, we can give it to the uh, future Palestinian state. As for the uh, holy triangle, for East Jerusalem, we are against dividing Jerusalem because A, it's not possible. B, we are in a, in a stage that we are uh, breaking walls around the world and not building walls. I think that the sovereignty on the holy places should be Israeli, but yes, we can be creative enough in order to create some kind of um, co-management with the Palestinians, maybe with some other elements in order to allow the Palestinians and other Arabs from around the world to come and visit and practice and tour and sleep and even maybe work in some of these places. It's possible. It will remain under Israeli sovereignty. Has the, the cooperation with Palestinian security forces, for example, failed? That's a key thing in Jerusalem and the West Bank. and. Of no, late, it doesn't most seem... Most of the time, it's, it didn't fail. Most of the time, it succeeded. It started to Does fail. Does it need to be strengthened? Definitely. But when, when there is a lack of trust between the Israeli government and Mahmoud Abbas, when they see us as not partner and we see them as not a partner, and by the way, if the right wing think uh, about the no partner, that they will find a Palestinian leader that will be a perfect partner, that will be a proud Zionist with an Israeli flag behind his back, it will not happen. Will He's the enemy. Will you negotiate with Abbas even if he's still in a technocrat unity government with Hamas? I'm against it. By the way, I froze the caucus of uh, the activity of my caucus, the minute he went to a unity government with uh, Abbas, I think that he ran to the hands of the Hamas because he also didn't find a partner in, in Israel. Israel. Last question, I just have to very quickly touch on the state controller's report that came out today, some allegations of improper excessive spending on the prime minister's household. Do you think it should be sent to a criminal investigation? It's not my uh, duty to decide, but I think that it's a very severe uh, state controller uh, report that we are facing. But you know what? The, we will not focus on that, although it's very, very severe. We will not focus on what he did and how he managed his own home. We will focus on how he managed our home, the home in Israel. He failed in his own home and his, he failed in our big home of Israel, and this is why he have to go home. On that note, we'll bring this interview to a close. Uh, Member of Parliament, Khilik Bar, thanks very much for Thank being you. with me. Thank and you. Good luck in Thank the coming you. elections. That's it for us for tonight. Join us back here tomorrow night for another edition of the News Today. Thanks for watching.